Fresh cheese is rolling off the production line at this family-owned factory in Melbourne, known globally for its authentic Italian styles. We have good products. We've always had good products. Italian-born Alfonso was among the original investors in the early days of the business, joining in 1988. He's 78 now and has seen a lot of changes over the years, but one thing remains the same. I'm oh, very proud and uh, the biggest problem is we can't make enough of it, especially for export sales. These days, Provador Group exports to 25 countries thanks to the vision of a new generation. Now they've done an excellent job in increasing the export sales because I think that's where the future will be. Australia's population is pretty limited. On an average day here now, we do about 80,000 litres of milk uh, a day that is delivered at about 2 a.m. every morning. Um, and uh, we're certainly growing that uh, year on year. This is our marinated feta line. We have a uh, ultra filtration system downstairs and we cube the Danish feta and then it's brought up here and it's put through this line where the marinade and the oil are added to the product. During the pandemic, sales of artisan cheeses are rising steadily. Consumers at home during lockdown are looking for a little treat. The supermarket sales have gone strong for us and in relation to export, uh, we've been very lucky. Most people are in the same position uh, overseas as they are in Australia and that they're sitting at home uh, and, and tending to eat a little bit more. So uh, we've seen our export sales grow uh, reasonably well over COVID, particularly in, in Northern Asia. Australia's proximity to Asia is part of our export success. To buy um, some of our fresh mozzarella products from Australia, we get it landed in Jakarta in seven hours uh, versus sort of 15, 16 hours out of Europe, out of Italy. Even so, freight disruption remains an issue during COVID and there are other challenges too. The staffing issue, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Australian-wide problem, obviously. All of our competitors are in the same boat. Our factory in Sydney, for instance, is running at about 50%. So that has reduced our output, which is obviously something that we're working on to try and resolve as quickly as we can. Providor is among many Australian export companies adapting to changing conditions by working with the international trade promotion and investment agency Austrade. Austrade has been fundamental in the growth of our export business. We've worked closely with Providor to help prioritise markets, directly connect them to new business opportunities in those markets by using our vast global network during a period of time when international travel has been limited. South Korea. China, Hong Kong, Singapore have always been strong markets for us, so is Malaysia, Indonesia. The great thing about Asia is they've got a huge population. You know, it might be only a small quantity of people that are actually eating cheese, but a huge number compared to some of the other markets that we look at. Austrade has helped develop a new export partnership in Japan, with sales expected to return $1 million annually. And the work you've done for us in Japan has been sensational. We, sure. um, we're very much looking forward to, to starting business with them. And at the moment, we're about to launch product in a new supermarket in Japan that they've introduced us to. Uh, direct business with the supermarket is always beneficial as the product ends up on shelf at a better price point. We have a great reputation as a clean and green manufacturer of food products and brand Australia in markets like Japan has a lot of weight. Once you get up into northern Japan, it's all about the fruit flavours and, um, and that's what's got the, the mass market appeal up there. What's helped Provador become such a successful export business is their ability to have the right product for the right market. So they've been able to tailor certain products based on local consumer preferences. With hopes for increasing sales in Canada, North America and Mexico this year, for Fernando, who has guided export growth over two busy decades, the future looks bright. We've had success up there because our range of products is quite unique. They don't compete directly with some of the products coming out of Europe. So we found a, a little bit of a niche and we found uh, a little bit of success up there that we're very happy about.